Oh, yeah, so this is a tip that I give this time every single year, which I think is crucial to doing really, really well, whether you're in GCSE year or A-level year or any year, really. It's about having covered the course and how you need to really get ahead of your class to make sure that you are giving yourself the best possible chance in those end of year exams, those terminal exams in year 11 and year 13. Um, why get ahead of your class? Why not just uh, wait for them to go through, uh, you know, the pace of the teacher? Why, why would you bother getting ahead of your class? Well, it's important because um, it's really, really tight to fit in an entire GCSE in two years or even three years. It's really, really tight to fit in all the content of A-level in two years. So what you need to really do is you need to think about what can you do to get ahead of that. You don't want to be at the end of the year learning something brand new and finding out that that's a massively hard piece of information and that you need time to let that sink in. It often takes two or three goes over something to really understand it in a deep and meaningful way. It often takes a little while to build up the confidence and the skills to tackle some of the hardest questions. So if you wait for your teacher to go through things and they will have carefully planned out all their courses so that they can fit it in the time they have available, then you could find that you'll get to the end of the year and the last thing that you learn is the bit you find the hardest and you don't have time to revise and review it. So this is my biggest tip that I really think, I really stress all people, this is what I would be doing if I was a young person right now taking exams, I would be looking to get the entire course covered first time through, in no kind of stressful way, but the entire course covered by Christmas time or maybe kind of February half term. I would be looking to have gone through my first look over everything by the middle of the year. And you can do that in loads of different ways. You can do that just by reading through your textbook and maybe doing a few exercises there, maybe making a few key notes, maybe looking for just out for the key points, not going into the fullness and the deepness of all the different parts of the, 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 the topic, all the really hardest bits, but at least so you've got a good overview of what's coming up and at least so you've got a bit of an understanding. The other way might be to use videos like I've got videos, check out my um, homepage uh, for all the topics in GCSE and A-level physics. So that let's say uh, nuclear physics, which comes up in the second half of year 13 quite a lot, which has got some really tricky questions in it, really tricky ideas, really tricky concepts. Um, you know, that's nuclear physics. It's uh, <laughs> synonymous, <laughs> synonymous with being really quite hard. Um, that, that you, when you get to the end of year 13 and you're learning that, that's not the first time you've gone through the idea of binding energy and you've gone through the idea of fission and fusion. You know, take your time um, over it, of course, but get started now and plan to have covered the entire of your course by the middle of the year. I think it's really, really important. Um, what it's going to do for you is it's going to build up your confidence, it's going to make you feel really, really good and making sure that you get there feeling like, oh, this is that bit that I was looking forward to studying or this is that bit that, oh yeah, when I read it the first time, I was struggling on that little bit. And you've already preempted your questions, you're already thinking about it. Um, yeah, I think making re revision resources as you go, something that I've actually noted down here and Rachel's just piped up with, it's a really good idea to make revision cards at the end of each week. Absolutely. And just if you're planning in that schedule, then go ahead and look forward as well and not just making the revision cards. Because like, let's say you can find somewhere a list of key definitions, you know, like on my website, for example, for GCSE, there is... Um, definitions that you need to know for GCSE physics and actually there's stuff that they could just ask you questions on just boom define this term and you could right now make yourself flashcards for all of those and you can go ahead and learn those flashcards now although you're not going to really truly understand very very deeply that topic until you've done the lessons on it you've done the practicals you've done all the questions that your teacher will do with you and everything like that and they'll help you to see the really hard bits and how to do the really hard bits at least you'll have a good knowledge of the language and everything by the time you get there that you can build on and then you're building the highest level learning rather than just the easy bits and what I don't like I don't like in my classroom is when kids haven't read ahead or done the homeworks in preparation for the lesson um, and I don't like when they kind of give me a blank look like the words I'm saying are brand new words that they've never heard and the learning doesn't get very far if we start at right here's a, here's a bunch of definitions that you need to know because then they're not fluent to use the stuff I will also say about fluency, and I'll, I'll get to the chat in just a little while because I know there's some great comments there as well. And I, I really don't want these these live streams to be all one way. You know, me giving you ideas. So if you're watching this later, then um, then do write in the comments if you've got any ideas as well, and do do you know hit up the chat as well. But ideas from you are sometimes really really valuable, and some of my best videos are actually ideas from you. But some of the hardest questions 
in GCSE and A-level physics are where you have to draw on different areas of the syllabus and bring them together to actually make a new answer. And really like, you know, the, 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 you have to actually use different areas to solve a problem. It's called synoptic questioning. It's um, a really, really tricky thing to do. You have to bring your knowledge from different areas and put them together to solve an answer. And that is some of the hardest kind of questions that you can do. You won't be able to do that if you don't have a good knowledge over the whole areas, over the whole uh, syllabus that you're studying. So really be, pay attention to that. Across the whole country, the synoptic questions are the worst answered ones. So it's a good opportunity for you to do better than other people and get the higher, higher grades as well. You need to have a kind of fluency with physics. You need to know not just, oh, I'm really good at one topic and not so good at the other. You need to know the whole of um, physics quite well. You need to have a, a good vocabulary to be able to discuss it at a high level and you're only going to do that by doing the whole thing at once, not simply waiting for the end of year 11 and that be the first time that you've come across the space topic, for example. OK, I hope this helps out. Um, I'll get into the chat in just a moment. As I said, I really want to hear some exam tips for you. So why don't we really quickly, if, you, if you're um, here, just give a little shout. Um, what, what exam tip works really, really well for you? Bang it down in the, um, in the comments and uh, let everyone else know what really happens what, um, what works well for you, what you're finding works well in your GCSE or your A-level for revision. I find, guys, that um, GCSE and A-level do take slightly different revision tactics because A-level won't be as much recall, although there are recall elements. And by learning things by rote, you make it easier to do the exam explanations. Uh, so in chat then, um, yeah, at the end of every week, maybe stopping to make revision cards is a great tactic. Uh, Rachel, definitely tell everyone how you revise for GCSE Physics, I know you did fantastically well. Um, is, this an ex is an exam in endorsed textbook and a revision guide from CGP enough to get an A star? Um, well, again, it's like how you use that thing, isn't it? Like, um, I don't think, yeah, if, if you just had that and you had nothing else, you didn't watch any videos, you didn't listen to your teacher ever, <laughs> You didn't do any practicals or whatever, you're not going to get an A star in physics. But yeah, there's, there's enough resources probably in those two things as well. Get some kind of workbook, some kind of questioning book as well. If you're in GCSE, get my Memorize Equations for GCSE Physics book. Um, <laughs> little plug, why not? Um, all those different things, yeah. The, the more, the merrier in terms of the resources. But there's loads of free resources out there as well. There's loads of great websites. There's loads of great teachers that share things online for free. Um, I'm just one of them. Okay, um, A-level physics, does Mr. Testosterone just say it's just giving a shout out for A-level physics because it's the best thing going. Um, and then that's the same question from Mr. Mr. Testosterone. Mr. Testosterone is like, if you watch the video I just made about, um, <laughs> about girls in physics and uh, about our prime minister using an insult, um, girly swat is what he described David Cameron as, then... Uh, <laughs> Mr. Testosterone is like the antidote to that kind of video, isn't he? He's obviously like, he's all about boys in physics, you know, and I really, I'm, I'm kind of worried about why there are fewer girls in, in, in studying physics and, you know, going and taking it to higher levels as well. And there seems to be quite a lot of girls um, in watching this video as well. So Zoe says, thank you for this video. I'm glad, Zoe. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, this video is actually, is actually because of a comment that somebody made at the end last week. Uh, I can't remember exactly what they said, but they said any any like um, tips on how to get ahead of my class, any tips on how to uh, revise at this this time. I think it's just sort of don't expect to understand things completely the first time you go through them. And uh, but if you prepare yourself to get a deeper knowledge in the lessons by doing some of the kind of easy stuff, by learning some of the diagrams, by learning some of the basic stuff, by learning the key points, learning the definitions. If you do that, then by the time it comes to the lessons, you've already you've already like pre-prepared yourself. You've, done, you've covered some of the basics. There's loads, uh, one, some of my po most popular videos are my how to get an A star and how to get a grade nine video. Um, you know, they're like really prominent on my channel as well. And I talk about Bloom's taxonomy. I talk about working up through the, the levels of understanding. Well, it's actually remember, understand, um, apply, which that's where people really start to struggle with the application. They know the stuff, they can't apply it. Um, and then up to analyze and evaluate and create. And my, my big theory about learning is that you can't do the, the apply, analyze, um, evaluate and create skills, which are 60% of the GCSE or A-level, 60% of the GCSE and the 60% of the A-level as well. You can't do them unless you've built the foundations beforehand. So as much time as possible in your lessons, you want to be working on the analysis and above sections. Uh, and so you need to make sure that you do the remember and understand bits. 
at home. And you do that just by really engaging with your textbook resources, watching these videos, etc. <laughs> Dr. Lemon's my favorite, my secret sauce. Dr. Lemon is the secret sauce. You know who Dr. Lemon knows. Uh, good old Lemon. Banged A-level, by the way. Um, <laughs> also, uh, so Zab said something there. Um, so I can't find I can't find a technique that's effective in year 12. Yeah, well, it's early doors in year 12. OK, so don't stress out too much. Um, I would say that uh, questioning in A-level is probably the most important thing. Um, hello, Ross. Uh, I also, I'm having a good day, Ross. Also, I feel like sometimes like I've got some bits missing of physics here, um, and thus how can I plug those gaps? Because I had two, I had four different teachers in two years for GCC, yeah, I get your feeling, yeah. Um, well, a really good teacher, one of the things that I do early on is I kind of look out for those gaps in knowledge and understanding, and I'm saying things like, well, you should know this, and it's not really an insult, or it's not really like a, supposed to make them feel bad, but like, okay, you need to know this, this is a really key fact to, you know, take this in. Um, so if you've got those gaps and you look for them, look for the key facts that underpin things. You know, look for the laws that underpin physics. You know, if you don't have from GCSE a really good understanding of like for forces of motion, all of Newton's laws, then you're going to struggle when it comes to the higher level concepts in A-level. If you don't have a really good understanding of Kirchhoff's laws, which are the rules in series and parallel circuits basically um, from GCSE, then you're going to struggle with the really hard things of like that as well. So I think look back, look back for the laws that are in GCSE. I, I do have a video that's called Laws in GCSE Physics, and I do have a Laws and Principles in A-Level Physics. And those big ideas, those laws and, and first principles underpin all of physics, so it's worth looking at. All right, um, I'm going to... Oh, somebody's commenting about girls. Yeah, so I think definitely girls, more girls should take A-Level Physics. I'm definitely thinking of doing physics for A-Level next year. At my school, only one girl did A-level physics, which is weird. Yeah, that's not unusual, unfortunately. I think the, the ratio is something like 20% of girls or something. But there, there's a, um, in the previous video that I've just put out, there is, um, there is a link to an article about the, diff the difference between girls and boys doing physics. And the, the interesting thing is girls still do better than boys over the, like, um, <laughs> you know, in terms of their girls' average grade, if that makes sense. So it's not that they can't do it by any stretch. Um, certainly at GCSE. So thanks, Kels. Glad to yeah, su subscribe and turn on notifications, everyone. Um, Feynman technique is time intensive, but really helped me in history. So Feynman technique is one of my really good, um, one of my really uh, good tips that I like. Okay, which is to say things out loud. I would actually suggest in the 21st century. Feynman talked about talk to the wall, explain it to the wall. Um, you know, just say it out loud. And when you say something out loud, and if you start to um and er, uh, you don't understand it very well. Uh, and you find that you, there's gaps where, um, you know, there's gaps in your knowledge where you struggle to kind of put into words exactly what you, exactly what you want to say, right, <laughs> which is there. <laughs> and then um, the phone technique in the 21st century, well, you can do what I'm doing really, which is to say it out loud, but say it to your phone. You don't have to share it. Uh, you don't have to share it with your, your friends or put it on YouTube or anything like that, but actually, if you say it out loud and you record it, then it's on your phone as a revision resource for later. So if you have an explanation that you like, then put it out uh, on your own phone and just you know leave it there. And uh, you know you say it out loud to yourself, and you can watch that same video over and over again. I think that's the fine mechanic. Yep, time consuming, but so useful because it puts you in the spot. It puts you in that slightly pressurized situation where you've got to try and explain it. All right, everybody, I'm going to go. Do you have any tips to help remember things? I'm really struggling even to make notes. So yeah, that would be my one tip, um, which would be to use your phone probably to make little clips of yourself or make little like voice recordings or something like that you can play back might be a good one. But also memory often works by location. So uh, that's why those, um, those A3 sheets that a lot of teachers use are quite good uh, because you know, you can remember that A3 sheet and you can remember what you wrote near that diagram. I always talk about annotating a, a equation sheet is a really good tip for memory. Memory and location are kind of, um, they're, they're ingrained, they're biologically, uh, by evolution, we've, we've got this really good spatial memory <laughs> and quite a poor like worded memory, if that makes sense. And the reason for that is because evolutionarily, we needed to, that's not really a word, is it evolutionarily? <laughs> In our evolutionary past, one of the most important things that we could do was find our way home. So we needed to have a really good spatial awareness. We needed to be able to um, remember 
the way things looked, what a, what a particular patch of a forest looked like, because that would help us find our little cave or our little community or whatever after our hunting trips. So I think that's important. Uh, use space to work that. All right. Thanks, Zoe. Thanks, everybody. Thanks a lot for hanging out with me for a bit. Have a lovely weekend. Um, what do I mean about the thing I mentioned? Can't find a revision cheek in. Um, so try the Feynman technique, which is what Rachel was looking at. I've got a video um, called the Feynman technique in the 21st century. What, what, what Richard Feynman said about learning was that if you understood something, you'd be able to explain it out loud and fluently, okay, without pauses and without ums and ers. So if you say something out loud and, and fluently and you don't have to stop and um and er, then you understand it well. And when you say things out loud and fluently, almost always we do stop and we um and we err. And when we do that, we realize, oh, we don't understand it very well or we're missing parts of our explanation. So by saying something out loud, it puts you on the spot that uh, you have to really put it into words. You have to find the right words to get it across. So because this is the 21st century and we've all got smartphones, my suggestion is my way that I would do that if I was a student right now is I would be, make videos on my phone or I'd make audio files on my phone, uh, you know, record me explaining something out loud and then I would re-listen -re to it and say, oh, I didn't really get that because I'm the nerd or actually that's not the right word, look it up again and then re-record it or something as a perfect explanation. And then once you've done that a few times, you'll build up a bank of really good explanations in your phone that you can listen to in your headphones or you can watch or something, uh, play, play back to yourself. As I say, like um, making videos for me makes me understand things better because it puts me on the spot and I have to really, really think about what I want to deliver before I do it. That's why I kind of like the live videos as well because it makes me have to really think about what I say. Uh, and I, <laughs> I don't want to be stopping like I did there and say, I'm an er and uh, look like I'm not as smart. Whereas when you edit a video, you can just kind of like, can cover up the ums and the ers a little bit. All right, guys, that's me. Thanks a lot for watching today. I hope this helps. Have a great weekend and uh, happy studies and get ahead of the rest of the class. You do not need to wait for your teacher to teach you something to go ahead and learn it. All right. You can learn, especially the easy stuff. You can learn them well on your own. All right. Thanks a lot for watching.